What's going on everybody? Welcome to episode 6 in your Node.js series. It's been going pretty slow so far, but we're finally to the point where we're going to install Express. This is the most common package used for creating backend applications. So, similar to what we did in an earlier video where we created a little web server and we responded to a web request, Express is going to do that same thing but add a lot of capabilities and give us something that can allow us to build a more complex application. So most of the time when you're building backend services or APIs, you're going to be using Express. There may be other options out there, but Express is what I'm familiar with, so let's get started. I did wanna give a quick shout out to FileStack, which is a file uploader, which allows you to easily customize and serve images in your applications. So you can deliver files in a fast, optimized, and secure way with their CDN and you can easily display images and files inside of your application. So check them out, I'll drop a link down below if you wanna support the channel. So we're gonna be following pretty closely to the Hello World from the Express.js website. So here's an example where it's going to require it and initialize an app, and then we can create an endpoint, being just the home page, and respond with Hello World. So let's go ahead and code this out ourselves. We will clear out what we have, and you will want to make sure you say npm install express, we did this actually in an earlier video. NPM wasn't working on the initial load of Git for some reason, so I just opened a new window and now I can say NPM install express. So if you're following along with the series and you just got Git bash, then you might need to just refresh by closing out of it and opening a new window, which actually I'm super dumb because when you open a new window, you will need to change directory back to whatever your project directory is. So we will go into documents and then into customers and now we should already have npm install express so it should be pretty quick all right there we go so over in our package.json you can see um, we're going to say yes reload and don't show it again so this is our express version and now we can head over to app.js and create a simple example i'm going to unpin this so it kind of slides over to the side there We'll say const express require express. Const app is express. So we require express and then we create an instance of it and assign it to app. Now we're going to use a port later on. I'm going to assign this to a const here just so we can reference it as port. I'm actually going to use all caps here. And then what we'll do is we'll say app.listen and this is going to take the port and then a function to show up in the terminal when the application has been launched. So we can say console log. And in here, I will just say something like app listening on port. And then we'll just say port. So let's try this out. npm run start app listening on port 3000. Now, if we go to localhost 3000, it says cannot get slash. And what this means is, although the server seems to be working, we're not actually receiving any information. And that's because we need to create an endpoint. So what happens when the user visits that URL? So we'll say app.get, and this is going to take two arguments, the first being the path. If you want it to just be the home page, you're just going to use a forward slash. And the second thing, being a function, so we'll just pass in an arrow function to find this inline, so request and response, very similar to what we did in episode one or two. Yeah, I think it was two, two or three, I don't know, earlier on in, in our life. And we'll say res.send hello world. Now we need to restart our server, so close out of it, make sure you saved app.js, and then we'll say npm run start app listening on port 3000. So let's head over to the browser and do a quick refresh. And now it says, hello world. Awesome. So you have a working application built in Express. Now the default method for retrieving data from the browser is called get. So what you can do is you can go to inspect. You can do this in Chrome, Firefox, Edge. It doesn't really matter. They're all going to be pretty similar and you can go to network and when you refresh the page it's going to keep track of all of the network traffic here is our request and it says request method get however there are other methods so if you wanted to access the same page but basically change the way in which you retrieved it you could change the request method so let me show you an example of that real quick if we go back to our application 
we can make a new option down here with saying app.post, which is another method that you often run into. And this will be at the same path. We will create an arrow function and then we will just say something else. So res.send and we'll just say this is a post request. Oftentimes a post is going to be used to add data where get is going to be used to retrieve data. The question is how can we actually make a request to this function instead of this one? As mentioned, by default, the browser is going to use get, so we're going to need a new technique. One way is to create an HTML form. However, I don't really want to create an HTML form because I really want to be working with data and JSON to create APIs. So we're going to get into more of what that means and what that looks like, but we'll start with the next video where we are going to install a tool to allow us to make post requests to our endpoints. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe.